we want to talk about what's our latest update with, with the swing space, um, how will our uh, pickup and drop off work, including uh, start time and dismissal time, um, and then what's the latest update with the Douglas MacArthur new build project, because we know that the use of this space is dependent on finishing that project, and then what are some of our next activities that you should be aware of um, in case you want to attend them. So. With the swing space project, uh, we are on schedule with the schedule we put out uh, to the school board and to you all in the spring. Uh, we've done some roof repairs already on the building and our, um, IT, our invitation uh, to construction managers to do the renovations on the interior of the building, including converting the auditorium to a gymnasium, um, is going out this week, hopefully. Um, and so that work should start this winter and uh, continue through the spring. Um, and then we'll also have the um, once the DSUP is approved, uh, which goes to the school goes to um, planning commission November seventh, that's next Thursday, um, and goes to city council November sixteenth, that's in two Saturdays from now, two weekends from now. Um, so just to have those on your calendar in case you want to come to the public hearing and sign up for comments, you're more than welcome to do so. We'd love to have your input, um, as I'm sure the council and planning commission will. And uh, then we'll be doing some of the the site work contracts. So based on the approval of that DSUP. Then we'll be doing the um, developing the interim parking space as well as upgrading the existing uh, playground here. Um, so this is what it looks like for those of you who attended the meetings previously. It's not too different from what you saw. The only difference is we added parking. Um, so we ha now have um, 197 parking spaces on the site. I believe right now we have about 77, I want to say. Um, and so it's adding a significant amount of parking to the site because we are adding a whole other school um, and we will be designating some of that parking for rec use as well. Uh, and then going into how the pickup and drop off, well, this is, these are, sorry, first there are some design characteristics of the swing space uh, and this whole project. So as I said, converting the auditorium to a gym, we have over 195 parking spaces. We'll still maintain separate bus loops um, but the reason we have to have the staggered start times is because we can't maintain separate parent drop-off lanes. So we are hoping to encourage bus ridership for both Patrick Henry and Douglas MacArthur students as much as possible. Um, and we hope you all can work with us and after this presentation give us some ideas about how that might work um, for your communities. And so the staggered type start times that we're planning for right now, uh, we had to make this decision kind of before coming back to you and the collaborative committee asked, okay, if we, if we can't tell you what the start time should be, can you please come back to us when you've made a decision? So we are currently looking at Patrick Henry maintaining its uh, existing schedule, which will be 8 a.m. to 2.35, and we're hoping Douglas MacArthur will start a half hour later um, based on the traffic study we've done for the um, development special use permit process, the site plan work. Um, the two schools have to start half an hour apart to ensure that we're able to clear out the site um, and then can start the next drop off. Um, so that's currently what we're doing. We can't do it within our current transportation uh, system. So we don't have enough bus drivers or buses to support adding all of this. Uh, so we are looking at contracting it out. Because if we didn't do that, we would have to be pushing the staggered start time even farther just because of resources. So we're trying to not do that to minimize the impact to um, both, both sides of the, both schools. Um, so to go over the pickup and the drop off a little bit, so we're proposing a counterclockwise circulation at Patrick Henry and clockwise at Douglas MacArthur. For those of you who've been involved in the summer, this is not new. Uh, we went over this then. But basically that um, Patrick Henry families would come in on the east side of the site, uh, loop around. There's enough room to fit all of the current um, basically the current amount of parents who drive their kids to school. Our traffic engineer went and did counts and took a measure, like a linear square footage measure of how many that is so that they'll all be pulled off of Taney Avenue. Um, and no one will be on Latham Avenue anymore because that's not where the parent drop off will be once this is in place next year. So Patrick Henry parents will come in on the right side of the site, they'll drop off near the front door, um, and they'll exit out the left side of the site or the west side of the site. And then in opposite, so that will clear out by, uh, for those of you who have been here in the morning, Ms. Bynum usually has it cleared out at 8.01, I want to say. And um, then after that, it will be for, it'll be, we'll have a staff person out there who switches the circulation, and it will be used for Douglas MacArthur drop-off, 
and they will um, enter in on the west side of the site and come around and probably drop, we haven't determined the exact drop off place yet, that's something Dr. Miller uh, can work on with her team, but probably somewhere around the cafeteria to ensure that we're pulling all those cars off. Uh, but like I said, hopefully we're able to minimize this by optimizing the amount of people who choose to ride the bus. Um, and so then briefly, this is not, we're having another meeting on this tomorrow night, but for the new Douglas MacArthur, we are on schedule. We have brought on an architect DLR group. Um, our contract for the uh, construction company will hopefully be finalized as well. Um, and so here's just some of the anticipated dates of when the major milestones are, um, including a September 2020 hearing process. So some of our next engagement activities, we're having this meeting tonight. Tomorrow we're having a Douglas MacArthur design kickoff meeting uh, that the architect will be facilitating. For those of you um, interested more in the new Douglas, or interested in as well, uh, the new Douglas MacArthur building, that'll be taking place tomorrow night at MacArthur. On uh, November 4th, we'll have the first Douglas MacArthur advisory group meeting, uh, which was recently appointed. Um, and then we're gonna have a Douglas MacArthur community workshop on you know, what's our vision for the future of Douglas MacArthur? What do we want this new school to give to the community on November 9th? So parent or community member, you're welcome to come to that. And then we'll be having a staff workshop on November 11th with Douglas MacArthur. And then this is the timeline we had back in the spring as well, just to show you again uh, what it looks like. So we're basically in this preparing the old Patrick Henry for Douglas MacArthur stage which will be done by fall 2020 when the Douglas MacArthur students will move in over the summer. Um, and then Douglas MacArthur students will occupy for about two and a half years and we're projecting a mid-year move. If we're able to save some time and move them earlier, that would be great too. Um, and so now uh, we wanna open it up. Uh, we have some particular things we wanna hear about. Of course, if you have questions or general comments or concerns, we'd love to hear those. Um, some of our focuses that we're hoping our collaborative committee is able to fo is able to work through later uh, as well are how what are some methods that we can get more students to ride the bus. Um, so if you could be thinking about that a little bit. Oh, that people come up to the mic. Okay, that's great. And then if you don't want to be on camera, don't come up to the mic. Right. Uh, and so how do we get how do we get more students to ride the bus? Uh, what are some, we had some discussions earlier about before and after care. Um, what, do we, what do we think about that or what are we hoping for that? Um, and then just gen in general, any other comments you may have. So uh, with that, this mic is open. You're welcome to come up and speak into it. <coughs> so on the subject of bus ridership, um, I know that it was proposed that some of the new buses at some point may have GPS tracking so that you can actually both, so that Central can track them okay, but so that par parents can see, oh, the bus is 10 minutes behind or three minutes fast. I think that would actually be helpful, especially if you have longer drive times when you're coming from a, a farther distance. I'm wondering if that's even possible on this, this time scale. So we've had some preliminary discussions with vendors uh, who do this, and yes, it is a possibility that we could add to that. Uh, right now, we're only looking at busing Douglas MacArthur, um, so then it's just a question of, it, it'll be a good trial period, but then Patrick Henry students wouldn't have that option. But yes, for Douglas MacArthur, uh, we may be able to include some kind of tracking system and app. Sorry. Queries been made about why people are hesitant to take the bus when offered. I mean, and to address the problem, you're gonna have to know what the hesitation is right. to ride the bus or have your children participate in the bus system. Right. So I'll feel like I feel like in almost every school because we do try to collect data at on it. We're at about um, a 30% parents drive them to school, 30% uh, walk to school, and then 40% ride the bus. So of those 30% who are getting driven to school, some of them are walkers and maybe it's raining or you know it's quicker for their parents to just drive them or it's easier for parents because they're on their way to work anyway. Mm -hmm. um, those, those are some of the reasons that people drive as well as um, if the bus, we've had complaints this year about buses being overcrowded, um, about buses uh, taking too long so that their student has to wake up early. So those are some of the things we're hoping that we're able to mitigate um, in the contract, because then our contract will actually be based on 
certain performance measures. Because for Douglas MacArthur, we have sort of the luxury of a limited group where it should all be bus riders, so right. it's really a question of why wouldn't you ride the bus? Not not a variable of, well, I could walk or drop off. Right. It's, so we can kind of target that as an issue. Right. Thank you. One suggestion um, for the buses might be to have a ride along. Um, you know, I know that would be something that may need to be, uh, you know, planned right. accordingly. But that could be helpful um, to have people feel a little bit more comfortable with their child ride. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. So you're talking about like a bus monitor, an additional yeah. staff member on the bus. Because um, we have received requests for that too on some of the buses where we don't have them. Yeah, and so that's a good point to really look into. Yeah. yeah. In terms, of, I'm not sure. Does MacArthur have before school care also? And will the counterclockwise, clockwise um, pattern still hold there? And then also for afternoon pickup. Is there going to be a rubric where one school goes in the other way, one goes out for parents to pick up? So the, with regards to your question about before care, Douglas MacArthur does not currently have before care. Um, it's something that came up in some of our discussions about if they're starting later, can we offer before care? Uh, I think like you're alluding to is part of our concern. If we have to have staggered start times for to make the parent drop off safe, then we can't have before care that's interfering with the parent drop off. So it may be something that we can explore uh, if if we're able to bus all of them. Um, so that's that's kind of a question. And then your oh, sorry, what's your second afternoon pickup? Afternoon pickup. So it would operate the same as in the morning. Um, so parents do start stacking a little bit earlier, but traffic engineers feel like the half an hour is enough time. You said you're alternating the route of the traffic uh, for the Patrick Henry and the uh, MacArthur, but they're doing it in the afternoon as well because the uh, afternoon the, there's nobody else after. Are they going to keep that same counterclockwise uh, for the rest of the day, or is it going to switch back? Or what? So during off-peak times, so not arrival or dismissal times, the it will operate as two-way traffic. It is two-way width. Um, so the whole loop will operate as two-way two traffic, but during the peak times or arrival and dismissal, it'll be in that counterclockwise form. So when parents are lining up to pick up their kids for Patrick Henry uh, in the afternoon, they'll stack in that counterclockwise. And then Douglas MacArthur would go the opposite. Hi, I'm Randy Gorman with the Capone Kids Program. Um, my question was, um, the, when it came to about before care, is the... Is the bus loop, where the bus loop is, is the cafeteria door in the same, within, at the same place where the bus loop is? Come back to uh, So not quite. So the bus loop for Douglas, you're talking about for the swing space. For the swing space. So the bus loop is that front uh, off of Taney Avenue. Um, and the cafeteria door is on the right side of the building, kind of where um, those two sidewalk entrances are. Okay. So it's not in the same place. So no. if if Capania kids were to offer um, before care, our parents would enter at, near the cafeteria door. To, that's typically why before care programs are held. And so they would enter at that place and not where the bus loop is. Okay, that's helpful. Yes. Thank you. Will um, breakfast be served um, for Douglas MacArthur students as they currently have um, at the current facility? Sorry, I'm not aware. Does Dr. Miller? Sorry, does uh, does Douglas MacArthur currently have breakfast? We do. We offer breakfast five days a week. We start breakfast at 7:30, which is a half hour before. Uh, the, the yeah. start of the school day. Okay. Yeah, and so that's if an we're essential, starting at 8.30, yeah. breakfast has to be breakfast at 8 o'clock. So 
you know, there there are some things that need to be addressed. Right. Yeah. That's a key component for many students. Yes. You know, who do attend the school. So right. Into okay. the time schedule. Yes, that's good. To, that's good to hear. some point you have to be a company or rec arrange some contract with them you need to know how big that's going to look like right. so would it be helpful to survey the parents at MacArthur now to figure out who is planning to do what or how, how much runway do you need to know so that may inform when you would want to survey right yeah that's helpful feedback because I know we're also planning to survey um, parents to see who will ride the bus, who's willing to ride the bus. Um, so for before care and after care, I would think that that's something we could get started fairly sooner, the sooner we're able to do it. I think that's, that's a great idea. One of the challenges with the before care, I will say, like we talked about before, is just making sure that you are still able to separate those staggered start times. So if we do do before care, it may be that you have to take the bus if you're attending, um, and, or something to that effect. Anybody else? Anything we didn't talk about? Yeah. So a major issue that the staff is concerned about, and it may also impact parents, is if there are staff arriving to Douglas MacArthur at Tanny Avenue, how can they enter before the school day when Patrick Henry is entering and loading and unloading their students. So staff, you know, many teachers come before the school day, and in fact, we'd like them to be ready to teach before the school day. So how would they access the parking, the parking areas, if those are being taken by queuing of cars or buses? So we haven't determined, and this will be a, a conversation for all of us and your Dr. Miller, as well as Ms. Bynum's staff, um, we haven't determined exactly who will park where, but um, one of the things I can say is that there, it's still two lane width. Um, so in theory, if your staff were parking on the right side of the site, they're able to park while the queuing is happening um, and kind of, not that it would happen, but vice versa. And the rec staff are able to um, have access to the left side of the parking lot um, at all times because it will be two-way. So I, I do think that's a great point to bring up and something we need to consider and watch um, and, and something we have to resolve when we start talking about where are we designated parking, um, what time are teachers actually showing up, um, and how do we make sure that all functions smoothly. But I, I think we'll be able to manage it. We're going to have to put in, um, as we do now, some staggered time between the time our staff arrives and the time that parents are allowed to arrive. Because parents will come at 7.15 and sit outside, then my staff can't get in. So we are going to hold two hour arrival times the same way it is so that there's not any confusion, which means parents cannot drop their children off before 7.45. So that will give MacArthur staff time to get in before the parent um, arrival comes. That's something that we were talking about holding true to because we, we don't, besides, we don't have any staff on duty prior to that time. Right. So we have to, you know, think about the safety of the children. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. So we're hearing everything's been a little quiet here. And this is quite a different meeting from the meetings we've had before. So are we feeling that some of this allays like your fears? Does it, does it resolve some of the issues? Or there are things that stand out still that make you go, help, this is not going to work? And what are those things that make you think, help, it's not going to work still? And what are those things that you think we, we've kind of solved? It to me sounds like it will work. I, the thing I hear the most from people in the MacArthur area is Seminary Road and getting them over there. And the um, time, the more
more time it's going to take and the not knowing how the impact of Seminary Road is going to affect it right now because it's not there. So I'm just going to repeat that for the camera. So that was about Seminary Road and the narrowing of Seminary Road and how that is going to block the traffic coming to MacArthur from that neighborhood to Patrick Henry in the morning. So Seminary Road, we think the traffic is going to be an issue. We don't know. We don't know, okay. But if we had everyone on buses, and I don't know how many buses that would potentially be, maybe eight, 10, 15, okay, buses then, and we rode those buses up here instead, and we didn't have the neighborhood traffic, that would actually maybe eliminate. So we, I think it's our role to try and get people on buses. Yeah, students on buses. Are there any things that stand out to you that you, you still see as a, like a major issue? Latham will not be the drop-off point, which is right. the issue right now. So they won't be there. They'll However, be they're going to all be coming right on right. Tooney, right at Latham. Right, but they have this big, long thing yeah, I that's get that. twice as long and as... And I know the reality of what life has been like. Right, so just for the purpose of the camera, so traffic on Latham is a major issue. Um, I, and Taney, yes, absolutely, okay. And the fact that we have um, a lot of traffic in those neighborhoods early on in the mornings. There is a video online for those of you that haven't been down here at seven o'clock in the morning to watch the traffic patterns, but we do have a video of it online when you can actually go and watch it for yourself and come and see the buses and the traffic. Um, the superintendent was down here uh, to come and watch it because he wanted to see what, what it was like as well. And it is congested, but it is also congested for a limited time. And we're hoping that some of that parking, that double parking, will end up being eliminated because we're going to have to make sure that we don't have people parking on the street and we don't have people dropping off anywhere other than the designated areas. That has to be one of the stipulations of this working. So, do you want to come and do the mic? It just helps for the purpose of camera. We want to make sure we're recording and keeping this. I guess my question is mostly for the MacArthur families. Um, do you see Seminary as your primary entry into the neighborhood or Duke Street? Because my concern on Duke Street is that you've got a really currently backed up light at Taney to go left onto Taney. And if we have more people coming that way, we should really petition for a left-hand turn signal. Otherwise, it's just going to create more chaos going back to Duke. Um, so I guess that was it. Afterwards. Um, coming you, in, coming in, coming in. If you're whoever, if you're trying you to get onto team, time, yeah, regardless of time, usually it's it's worse in the evenings because people are trying to get back in to, to go left. So these are things that are really useful, and that we can take notes on, and that maybe that is something we have a conversation with the city on. Okay. So the short yeah. of it is, uh, I'm over there, and, and every time I drive over here, I come down to. So you have to get off at the Sherwin Williams, and the only way I could turn left on Taney was to wait for that red light. So these cars stopped, and they let me turn. So I, I like the idea of something more positive. Um, Seminary Road. How many people drive? It's going to be maybe a hundred people, maybe, and hopefully not even twenty cars. Um, so that is more like a, a drop in a bucket compared to the, the volumes on projected volumes on Seminary. It is my thought. I don't know how many will come up that way because ideally most of them shouldn't be busing from the Clover College Park. Okay. Yeah. It is my guess, but I, I'm not sure. And these are certainly things we'll bring up. Um, those intersections and the seminary road change were looked at as part of the traffic study because we did have that knowledge already. All right, well, thank you all for coming. Uh, for collaborative committee member, members, we're gonna meet upstairs. Um, and for anybody else, we'll hang out for a little bit. Um, if you wanna ask us any questions kind of offline, that's fine. Oh, and there's also a one-page fact sheet. If you wanna take it with you, take a few extra, share it with your neighbors, that would be great. Thank you.